There we are. I think we get the idea. Uh, that was an involuntary whoa from me. I think we all think we can make a, a little Scooby noise, but not necessarily uh, go the full shaggy. Um, I guarantee everybody's having a go Yeah. Now. Oh? Yeah. No, that's... <laughs> Garbage. Uh, Ken Spears, the co-producer of the popular cartoon series Scooby-Doo, has died aged 82. That's the reason uh, why we're talking about this today. His death just comes three months after that of his creative partner, Joe. So let's talk about their legacy, particularly around Scooby-Doo. Uh, the voice of Shaggy and Scooby-Doo in the UK, the perfect man to, to chat to, as always, Mark Silk. Hello, Mark. Like how you doing, buddy? Nice try, sir. You too, Helen. <laughs> right, who's got the bang on? Ooh, 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 that's mine. Oh, that's what's that? That's, that's... I think. I think Helen wins. It sounded like Tony was throwing up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think what you're trying to do is. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, Helen, Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> Do you know what, Mark? I mean, we have chatted about this before, but I love yeah. talking about this kind of thing. Um, we, we, we have so much fun, you doing that, us listening to it, us watching the programme. And But to be the creative forces behind it, to be the two guys or one of the two guys in Ken's, um, in Ken's place, to, to, to just sit there and create something that's given millions of people so much fun, it's, it's a remarkable legacy. It really is. And it, it's so sad to find out that we've lost him, but... It's a, on a day like this, what a great time to go back and, and enjoy the legacy, really. You think that this thing has gone, it's been going since 1969, and it's still co as cool and groovy as it was back then. It's it's a hell of a legacy. I, I mean, so how did you get the gig, Mark? Did you have to audition for these guys, or, who, you know, who, who said, yes, you can be the voice of Scooby? Who said, yeah. yeah. I, you know, as a, um, I'm a voice actor, so day to day I'm creating new character voices for, for new shows. But as a fan of this work, I think like a musician, really, you know, you, you're, you're doing your own work, but then you'll play a few of your favourite tunes. So in studios, people would hear me kind of, you know, emulating stuff that I loved, whether it was Muppets or, you know, Scooby Doo or, you know, and, and it, I think people knew that they, that I could perform the characters well and be a really good match for the original voice guy who was Don Messick. Don Messick was this legendary voice actor for Hanna-Barbera. He did loads of characters like, uh, he was Boo Boo Bear, Gee Yogi, Don't Tell Ranger Smith about the picnic basket, and do you remember Muttley and Dastardly and Muttley? Oh, great <laughs> Yeah, he was the, the, the wincing laugh. <laughs> He was Muttley. He did loads. but And I got to meet Don Messick at the very beginning of my um, voice acting career. But I, I think with so much of this stuff, it's, it's trust. People people knew that I could perform the character, be a good match, and they trust that I would, you know... I, in the end, you've still got to act. It's yeah. still a performance. You know, you, I think most people could do a party piece, but you've still got to bring these characters to life and, and make them live and breathe. So that's how that came about. And, that, and ju just, just, just in honour uh, of the of these guys, I said Ken and Joe who created Scooby Doo. Just for you to say there, you create cartoon characters. I get. I guess that's like an actor just getting getting into character and dis discovering how to play somebody. How on earth do you? Is it a bit like writing a, a record, a tune, in the sense that you hope no one's gone there before? Where do you begin? <laughs> That's a really good analogy. The musical analogy is exactly right. I think when you're when you're a musician, you'll be with with, with the band or just playing by yourself and, and just riffing and just trying stuff out. And then every now and then something sticks, and you'll go, "Oh, that's that's nice. What's that? What was that?" And and you'll do it again and and you know elaborate on that. And it's kind of like that with with voice acting. And then there's a, there's a great character on on uh, CBBS called Grandmaster Glitch. Grandmaster oh. Glitch. Ah, do you watch it too, Helen? <laughs> it's such a good show, that. It, it, they oh, go flying you. around the world, and it's a unicorn flying a load of people around the world. Go better than that. A disco unicorn, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's a uh, Go Jet is, is it's a preschool show on CBBS, and it, it's a terrific show. And I'm the bad guy in that. Actually, do you know what? He's not bad. He's just misunderstood. Grandmaster Glitch. But then there's 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 a whole stack of um, there's a whole stack of characters. I, I work on New Thunderbirds, New Danger Mouse. There's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles project I've been working with with a company in Chicago. Um, if I mean if 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 you want to find out more, I'm on. Uh, 
if you go to the social medias, I'm at Mark Silk, M-A-R-C-S-I-L-K. But there's there's a, a stack of them. And and, and th- that's quite interesting, Mark, because by, by very nature, all your work is done anonymously to that extent. But within the voiceover world, that's where your currency will be high, I guess, because I'm, you know, again, with the best way in the world, apart from your family members, who would search the credits for the voiceover person? Do you, is that a fair thing to say? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, do you know what, though? As a kid, I did. When I was like sort of five years old, I would ask my mum and dad to read the end credits to me. And and so they're, they're going, key grip, sound designer, uh, you know, uh, director, producer. Best boy. Uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, I was always mother's best boy. She always said I was special. But there was, it was exactly that. And that's kind of the joy of this as well, because you can, you can, you can create anything. You know, anybody that wants to, to do something creative, listening to this now, do it because you, there are no limitations other than your imagination. You know, you can, you, you, I, I love the fact that I can walk down the street and no one really knows what I look like, but then there might be a celebration with something like, you know, Comic-Con or some big online event that we do now. And, um, and it's lovely being able to share that with other people yeah. that love the same stuff you do. You're a superstar. Uh, Helen just sent me a message saying, get him to do Johnny Bravo. Why don't you get him to do Johnny Bravo? Can you do Johnny Bravo? Oh, mama. Yeah, man. Charlie Bravo. Man, I'm pretty. <laughs> I love that cartoon. I've got to be honest, I just had to look at your face because I wanted to see the face behind the voices. You know, it's a heck of a talent, full respect to you. And I think you're right. This is a great time for people to experiment and have a bit of fun and do all this. You know, you can do this in your bedroom in lockdown, can't you? It, it really is. And you know what? Technology is your uh, friend too. If you have a phone and even something or a really basic USB microphone, you know, this might not be the kind of microphone that I'm using in my studio now. Willing to from my studio to your studio and this microphone's the size of my face you know it's a it's a beauty but um seriously w- when i've traveled around i've even done national tv commercials on a tiny little mic in a hotel room with a bunch of pillows around me like you create a pillow fort so the acoustics are nice and you can get some really good results but the the best thing anyone could suggest is do it and try stuff and play and and listen back to things and um be a really good self-critic and what what didn't work how can you make it better and what does work and how can you take that somewhere else but really if someone wants to do it go ahead do it Mark, Mark, I've no. We're going to end now, but I've no because we've got time for the news. But I've no idea whether you can do this. But but when I was a kid, I used to love. Uh, you've reminded me with Mutley with the wacky races, all that kind of thing, and dastardly and Mutley, <laughs> and stop the pigeon. Were you a fan of stop the pigeon at all? Mutley, you snickering hound. When cottage is needed, you're never around. Those moth-eaten medals you wear on your chest should be there for bungling, which is what you do best. So stop the pigeon. Stop that pigeon now! All right, so you've, yeah. never, you've never seen it. Okay, but... Never heard <laughs> of it. No, but can you do, and this I imagine is the holy grail of people like you, can mm. you do clunk? You know the... Oh, the... the that, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can, kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, oh, by the way, that was Don Messick. Same as Scooby Doo. Yeah. Oh. yeah can so, you? Well, no, but I, but I used to look, I wanted, I wanted, I was trying to find it. <laughs> it, it was all, it was these crazy vocal sounds, yeah. That'll do for me. Mark, what a joy and a talent you are. Yes. Cheers, Mark. You too, Helen. Right back at your sister. I'll take that. Mark, Mark Silk there, the voice of, well, everything, really. Good that, wasn't it? <laughs> really good. I'm going to yeah. listen back to Thank that. You. You've got a massive what? smile on my face. L- what a man, it's 6 A lot of pleasure. Now. Next time you ask him to do Johnny Bravo. Oh, you did. On digital, BBC Sounds, smart speaker and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live.